Hey brothers and sisters, welcome to another Last Chance Ministries video session. I just started watching uh, Truth Shock TV's latest video. Now I've seen some parts of it before. The parts I've watched so far, I've seen a little bit of them. I think it's like a year end date for 2015, but also showing just how close we are to Jesus Christ's return. And I've seen some stuff repeated, some stuff repeated, which I also hear a little bit more than you know I heard before about it. Uh, there's this um, drag queen. Um, demonic drag queen. Anyone who does female impersonation is demonic. Okay, even Bruce Jenner is demonic. When he thinks he's a woman that's not of God, that's demonic. You know that that is demonic, straight out demonic. Well, anyway, this drag queen says, "Let's see if we can pee off any Christians." Okay, and then they have this mockery of Jesus on the cross, and he's with another man. It's a dummy. It, you know, it's a dummy in front of this guy, and he's acting like he's doing something to it. Well, you know, these people don't realize they're going to stand before God, and they are going to give an answer why they did that. And then uh, Phil, uh, Bill, Bill, Mary, or Bill, somebody used to do the, the talk, one of them talk shows. He said um, something against the Lord too. I, th I believe he's an atheist. I don't know. The way I feel about it is this. These people are going to stand before a loving God who sent his son to die for them. And because of their demonic brainwashing, they're going to have to go to hell. Because they received not the payment for their sin through Jesus Christ. I was talking to a beloved sister last night, which, you know, her and I, I really feel God brought her into my life. I really do feel that God brought her into my life. And we really talked for about a couple, about an hour and a half we talked, and it was just really a real good conversation. And we were talking about, you know, how you can't find churches today that are that are truly churches like they should be. Like back in the olden days, like back in the 19, I don't know, 1960s, 1950s, you know, before I was born. But you see movies of, like, even back in the 1800s and stuff where they had churches. These churches were family. I mean, you know, like Menher said, you know, we know that we were we were chosen by God to be family, you know, brothers and sisters in Christ. And, and we were brought together. And she said she thanked God that, you know, he brought her into my life or you know I brought yeah he brought me into her life well vice versa I thank God he brought her into my life uh, she's younger than I am and uh, she is on fire for God and she lives in a household that is um, only her and her mom is um, Christians or believers you know so I want to ask you on a uh, few unspoken prayer requests please pray about them uh, you know I hope you don't mind this uh, sister please pray for her husband Jerry that he will come to know the Lord before it's too late. I do believe that the time is, and I'm giving you his name so that you can pray directly to for the Lord's ears for Jerry. Uh, pray that God will, pray for all Jerry's, okay? <laughs> pray for all of them. They all need help. I mean, well, the ones that don't know God do. Um, anyone who don't know, know, know God needs help. They need to be brought to God. So pray for all lost souls. Wasn't doing that being funny. I mean, although it came out kind of funny. Anyway. And talking to her, you know, last night, we talked about a lot of different things. And I was telling her, you know, and, and she said, well, you should write that down. And I was like, well, you write it because, I'm, you know, if you want to write it and post it on your Facebook, go ahead. I can't do the writing. I can talk about something, but I can't word it, you know, as far as typing goes. I'm not a writer. I'm more of a speaker, I guess, you know, on things. I was telling her, you know, I was watching yesterday. I've been watching a few days here about celebrity deaths and uh, how, how they died and sometimes you see the ages they were when they died and a lot of people were I mean a lot of these people who were stars were you know celebrities weren't even past 50 when they died you know and they died of heart attacks and renal failure and liver diseases and cancer and heart attack cardiac arrest you know uh, AIDS uh, murdered most rap artists are murdered is what it said and it was it's just so you know it's it's awful these people will there was one that had a gold casket okay one had a special made wicker basket casket for themselves these people put out money to bury their earthly remains i mean you know you're made of the earth which probably if no one believes in god they're not gonna believe you're made of the earth but if you go back and dig up some of these people and i'm not suggesting you do but go back in like the 1800 dig up an old grave from 1800s because they're not don't don't but i'm saying if you did it'd be dirt in in, in, in the casket because that's it goes back to the earth now the days like my mom and dad my grandma and grandpa and probably my uncle that's deceased that they all they're all buried in the same graveyard just even in the same area their bodies are still the same as the day they were put in the ground. Mama's been there for 36 years. Papa's been there for 20, I want to say 26 years or something like that. No, well, see, 36 for Grandma. So, Papa's been there about 27, 28 years. 
and their bodies are the same. Mom and dad's been there 13 years, and their bodies are the same because they are they're sealed in a cement vault. I don't know why we did that. You know, technically, the body should have been just put in a regular vault like they do. Didn't need to cement vaults, but I think it was actually a a, a half to in that in that graveyard. They do it that way. But anyway, um, those bodies are still the same because they are air sealed, so they won't change. Well, you know, your soul when Jesus comes in, it's blood sealed. Jesus has bought you with the blood He bled on the cross. But there's a lot of people out there that are making fun of that blood, you know? Why do you spend all your life catering to the flesh, catering to this body that's going to go back to the earth, letting it have its pleasures, you know? You have a soul inside, and if you wake that soul with Christ, you're not going to want to do the things you once wanted to do. There's some people that's changing their view, like on the rapture. They're changing their view from pre-trib to mid-trib to post-trib. Uh, I'm a pre-trib. I believe the rapture is happening before tribulation. I believe it's at the door. I believe everything I believe since I've told you first time I believe that we go, like twinkling of an eye. I have not changed my mind on that. Uh, some people have a different point of view, and you know, and that's maybe that's what God's given them as a way to think about it. Me personally, I I believe God gave me what I've got, and I think about you know, I know when my dad told me back when well, he was talking to all of us, not just me, but back when I was like probably in my young young childhood, I'd say but under ten years old or so, maybe a little over ten. My dad was talking about how he went, he was in the hospital one time, and in the emergency room they gave him. Uh, penicillin he was allergic to penicillin and um, he uh, he said that he was um, he left his body and he was like going toward the light and I believe my father saw the light you know and he, but he came back and he said he remembers when he left his body he felt no pain no pain but then he remembers coming back and feeling all that pain again that he was in and of course, he got he got better. You know, he lived to be sixty three years old. My dad would have been seventy seven had he lived. He'd have been seventy eight this year, but last year on September he'd have been seventy seven. My mama on May the fifth would have been seventy. Okay, and uh, I'm I, like I said before, I miss them, but I would never wish them back in this world for nothing. My mom and dad got saved just days before they went home to be with the Lord. They gave their heart to God on a Saturday, and dad died Thursday, mom died Friday of the following week. So six days and five days, you know, for five days for dad, six days for mom. After they gave their heart to God, they went to be with God. God is such a loving God. He really is. But Bill Meyer, that's his name, Bill Meyer. That's the one I'm talking about. He was, I think he's on the Day Show or something like Jimmy Kimball or something like that. He's on like one of those type of shows. But when he said that, it really made me mad. And he's sitting there because the audience is laughing. He's got a smirk on his face. These people don't realize they're going to stand before a mighty God and have to answer for every stupid thing they have ever uttered out of their, word, out of their mouth. And I'm not, I'm not saying this to be rude. It is stupid when you talk against a loving God. You know, when I was living in the homosexual lifestyle, I knew I was wrong, but yet I was blinded by the pleasure of the lifestyle, which it really, there really is no pleasure in it. It's actually, you're hurting yourself more physically and mentally than you ever could imagine. You are literally hurting yourself by being in that lifestyle because there's no love. You're abusing yourself with mankind. God even says, man, abusers of himself with mankind. That is, any kind of homosexual, uh, any kind of homosexual relationship is abusing yourself with strange flesh. It is not what God intended. Now, there's some people out there. There's one young guy, which I've done it before. He is trying to do everything he can to prove gays are okay with God. But you know what? You can do all you want to. You can take the Bible and twist it. But you know what? The truth of the matter is, you're going to stand before God and give an account for everything you spoke and every idle word and he's going to say you know you you know I, 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 I'm figuring when these people think they're trying to you know uphold the homosexual life relationship or lifestyle they're going to stand before God and he's going to say well did you not read the word and they're not going to have any excuse because God knows God is the word and God made the word when Jesus stay, when you stand before Jesus and you, he and you know what it's going to hurt Jesus because he doesn't want to send no one to hell he doesn't want to he don't want to send you to hell that's how much he loves you I'm going to say people, brothers and sisters and people that are not of God, because you're, if you're not of God, you're not a brother or sister. You're, you're a, God's creation. So all creation that God has made in human form 
you're going to stand before Jesus Christ and you're going to give an answer for every idle word you spoke and everything you ever did, thought, or even reacted to someone. You're going to answer for that to him, you know? And many of you are sitting there just like these celebrities that died. I mean, there's childhood celebrities that died, like some died actually when they were, ch when they were children. Like the one who played on Poltergeist, she died when she was like 12 years old, you know, and um, many years ago. And then there's other people that have died, um, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, or some that, like, I think it was on, um, I want to say one was on growing pain. And they died hanging, or a gunshot wound, self-inflicted gunshot wound, or they hung themselves. You know, brothers and sisters, I'm just trying to tell you, people think that stars have a glamorous life. No, they don't. They get in there and, and they, they, they don't want to lose that money because that money is what's making them feel good. And they get in there and they start to gain weight or they start to do this and they, they, they get to where Hollywood don't want them. Well, now all it takes back then, but now all it takes is you sell your soul to the devil and you'll be in there. You give your soul to the Illuminati, which is the devil. You'll, uh, they'll always find something to give you. Uh, you've got people out there singing now that have no talent. They have no talent at all. Uh, personally, I, I used to be a big-time Madonna fan. I don't think she has any talent no more. Seeing her for what she is, she has no talent. <clears throat> she sings in one key. And then you got, um, you got, let's see, who else says it? These rappers, okay? A lot of them are just what they are because, and you know what? Most of them are murdered. I think there was only one on there that died of like natural causes or something like that. But the rest of them were murdered and, and gunshot murder victims, you know? It's it's a way of another way of war. East side, west side, or east east coast, west coast rappers, and they call it, they have war against each other. And brothers and sisters, that's not what God meant to happen. It's either drugs or it's money or it's somebody's somebody after some woman. You know, it's all worldly garbage. You know, I mean, if a woman respects herself enough, she's going to wait for the man that is meant for her. Like yesterday, I saw something on on the uh, you know celebrity death and what when they died, um, what caused their death and stuff. And you know what um, they had on there? They had porn stars as celebrities. I'm sorry, a porn star to me is nothing but a high priced car girl. They are a car girl. They are a they're they're a prostitute. They're selling their bodies for money. Only they're doing it before a camera. Where you got hookers on the street doing the same exact thing, but they're not doing it on camera. So they're just a high pri high priced hooker that's making mega bucks to, to show the nastiness of their flesh. Something that's supposed to be between a husband and wife, not just anybody. And it's disgusting. It, you know, back years ago, I used to watch that kind of stuff, but you know what? Now thinking about it, it makes me disgusted because that's not something that you share with the world. Most of them died of heart attacks or renal failure or, or cancer or something like that. You know, brothers and sisters, what I'm trying to say is, you know, life is too short. When you look at the span of your life, your life is but a vapor. You take 80 years to eternity, that's nothing. Eternity is a lot longer, that's forever. And if you're making that decision while you're walking on this earth to live in the flesh and give the fleshly desires that it wants, well then you're taking, and you're taking it too far, you're putting your soul in hell. And I, and I believe that when God stands before to do the judgment, it's going to hurt him because he doesn't want to send nobody to hell. Because no one really even understands. They think that living in this life and doing what they want to do, you know, because I hear this say, this has been a saying I've heard for years. You only got one life. You got to live it up. No, you don't. This life is an interview. The true life comes after. Eternity versus 80 years. Eternity is life. This is just the interview. And... Um, don't think that movie stars are any better than you. Don't don't dare think they're any better. They're no better than you. They're just someone who gets paid to get in front of a camera and act. I mean, what's the big deal? I mean, I used to be like, you know, I wanted to meet this and meet that. Now I could care less if I meet any of them. I watch them on TV. They're just a person like working at Walmart to me. I mean, really, I don't Google or no, I don't Google out or nothing over nobody on movies no more because I know they're just a character doing a gift that God gave them. Some of them use the gift for good, and some some of them use the gift for bad. I don't think God gifts porn stars. I think God God gives them uh, gives them gifts, but they turn them around and use them in another way. Plus, well, like they may have God's gift to them may be a, a, a beautiful body, you know, but they use that beautiful body for sin. 
You know, instead of them being out there singing praises to God or or anything like that, they're too busy. Uh, they're too busy doing what's not nice, what not what's not natural, and and God does not God does not approve of that. You know, um, <clears throat> there are so-called Christians that are addicted to porn. You know, um, I, I, I in my heart I believe. If you know, and, and if I'm wrong, if this doesn't work for you, then I, I mean, I don't know why it wouldn't, but I believe if you truly come before God and you pray and give to Him whatever addiction you have or habit you have, whether it's watching porn or drinking or smoking, you truly come before Him and you cry out, God, I need you to take this. I'm giving it to you. You've got to be willing to give it to Him and mean it from your heart. Don't sit there over saying you're giving it to Him and holding it with a death grip. I say that goes for smoking, drugs, anything. You have to come to God and truly give it to Him. And like I was saying, you know, it's um, <clears throat> my goodness, it's um, it's not easy living in this world. And when you got to see all this garbage and stuff, but there's too many people in this world that are living their lives to please the flesh and they're going to die in the flesh and when you die in the flesh you will be accountable for all sins when you come to Jesus Christ you still sin but not openly God take God gives you an idea he gives you what he wants you to stop that's not of him it's called conviction the Holy Spirit does convict although there's some preacher says it don't but you know what whatever okay anyway like I was saying you know I just feel like we need to be truthful. We need to be honest. Are you living for your flesh or are you living to the soul? Which means are you allowing Jesus to guide you? Are you praying to God? And you can't do it on your own. You've got to give it to the Lord in prayer. Without the prayer, you're not getting nowhere. You've got to give it to God. Fully give everything to God. God loves you. He sent his son to die for you. You know, that's love. That's love. He did not have to come down this world and suffer any kind. Of, and you know, let me tell you, I believe when it comes to Jesus Christ, he suffered more pain than anybody. And Bill Meyer, you know, I, I'm saying your name right. I just pray you get your heart right and stop laughing at stupidity. When you speak stupid and other people laugh at you, that's stupidity. People think they're funny when they say a cuss word. You know what? It shows me that you got a lack of verbal communication. If you can't talk in a normal tone, you got to cuss. Ladies, you don't look pretty fine, flying the F-bomb. You don't look pretty calling someone an SOB. You don't look pretty calling people names. No, you don't. You look stupid. That's not of God. We as children of God are not to knock people down. We are to build them up. We are to pray for them. We are to love them. Stop allowing the devil to use your mouth as a, as a, a X-rated uh, speaker. Start talking the word of God over people. Start lifting people up and giving people blessings instead of sitting there acting like you know everything. And you're going to cuss somebody out because they grabbed the last roll of toilet paper. Give me a break. Give me a break. Because I'll tell you right now, there ain't much time left. When I seen this video, and I haven't watched it all yet, True Shock TV, these people upstairs are getting on my last nerve today. I don't know if they're up there cleaning or if they're up there moving or what's going on, but they're like clicking every so often. So God, I'm asking you to take that right now and put my mind on what I'm doing and not on what they're doing in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father. Come clean with God. Come clean with God. And, and what I mean when I say come clean with God, I mean take the time and like tell God your feelings, your, your heart feelings. You need to. Like yesterday, I, Lord, I want to do more. I want to tell you more. But I need you to give me the ability to do it because I don't know what to say. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. I told him, yeah, I, I talked to God yesterday and told him some feelings I had, and I feel different toward it now, you know? I allow the devil to use jealousy. You know that little green, that little green bug, jealousy? Yeah, I allowed him to use it to hold hold my emotions back toward people, you know, getting jealous because they had something. And it wasn't, it was my cousin because she has family. I, I was kind of jealous, you know, because I, I don't have family no more. My mom and dad are gone. My oldest brother don't want nothing to do with us. Well, we can't have nothing to do with him because of his drug uh, addiction and, and dealing and all that stuff. And his children, which were my niece and nephew, don't. They want to live homosexuality. They won't let me tell them the truth. And the one wishes I was dead, which I know it's not him, it's the devil, but I just pray that God will please reach down and touch them. 
I see friends like on Facebook posting things that don't don't really have godly value on them. It's almost as if they just they had a total change in their life. They they're not walking the same. And I may be wrong, but this is what I'm seeing. I, I I went to a church, and the church was a church that was not a church to me because they made promises, and they did not see them through. Uh, they they did me wrong. They did me wrong. It's right, wrong. Yeah, right. Totally wrong. Promised me stuff, and and I, I I put it upon the fact that they're human, okay? But the truth of the matter is, they they're representatives of God, and if you make someone a promise, you should write it down somewhere. With all the electronics, there's a way that you can put it down. It'll remind you, hey, you got to go do such and such. One man there promised he'd come and have Bible studies with me. I have never seen him. That's been since September. I'm supposed to have fellowship with people. There's no one called me, checked on me, or nothing. You know, nothing. 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 Uh, matter of fact, I have one of their... I think I took him off my phone. I need to make sure. But while, while I'm talking to you guys, I'll check it right now and make sure. Because he never, he never ever calls me. So, you know, why have his telephone number? Anyway, like I was saying, you know... Um, okay. Like I was saying, you know, there's just so much stuff happening that people don't, people don't care. I mean, you know, they're, they're just so, um, and I believe I have actually took him off my, yeah, I actually took him off. Okay. All right. I took him off my phone. I never talked to him, so I have him on there. You know, it's like, I know he's, he's busy. He has a lot of things to do, but last time I saw him was back in October or no, I think it was October. He came by to see if someone lived here where I live at, and I'm like, I don't know, but he left a name here, and I found out later, no, they didn't. And so after, you know, <clears throat> and um, they came, he said, we're not going to stay long. He said, I just want to know if you know these people. Well, he didn't come to fellowship with me, in other words, okay? He didn't come to fellowship with me. And well, we did fellowship for a little bit. They haven't been back since. And the, and, and the thing of it is, brothers and sisters, I'm not doing woe, poor pity me. It's just the fact that I can't get out and go places because of my brother. I just can't. I don't feel... I mean, if my cousin comes and sits with him, I can go to church, you know. But I honestly can't find a church that I can go to that I feel at home in when someone does me wrong and lies to me like I was going to become a member of the church and I realized I don't need to be a member of a, of a Rostel here on earth I don't need to be a member of a church earthly church and when I'm a member of the blood blood bought church of the redeemed in heaven I'm, my name is in the Lamb's book of life so I let it go that's I'm a member of the Christ, the body of Christ and that's important that's the most important thing be be a member of the body of Christ whether you're in a church or not and these days do you really want to be a member of a church if it's not really a church that's the Bible meaning of a church which means love compassion kindness and and going going to help people I mean, regardless it's just going to go and sit and talk to somebody you know that's the Christian thing I don't care if you've got a job you know you you've got time in between your work like you got days off why can't you take an hour out of your day off? You know, you got two days off a week. Okay, well, clean your house one day, and next day, go see somebody. And, and, and bring the love of God to them, you know. If someone's sick, back, like back in the olden days, you know, you've seen people, they brought they brought soup or something. <coughs> Which I don't want people to bring me food or nothing. I want spiritual feeding. I, I don't want, you know, food-wise. I want talk. I want to be able to, But I don't want just anybody coming to my house. I want someone who wants to talk about the love of God. I want to grow in my faith, not stagnate in it you know I, I want to be strong in my walk with Christ I mean brothers and sisters churches are not what they used to be if you've got a good church where you go then you know what thank God and pray for that church to get even stronger but if you question yourself on why are you going to this church and you're not getting fed you know what maybe it's time for you to walk away or maybe it's time for you to do some serious praying that that church will wake up because there's a lot of churches out there that are not truly serving God a lot of them are turning their back on God and going into homosexuality beliefs, you know, same-sex marriage, and Loudon be behind the pulpit, and and, and allowing what the, the Bible says very plainly is not of God. They're allowing it to be in the church. Lesbian uh, ministers, uh, gay ministers, hello. It's not of God. And if you go to a church that's got a gay minister or a lesbian up there, or even a woman up there standing, she's the head of the church. Sorry, it says, in, I think it's First Peter, or in, I know it says it in Timothy, it says, I do not permit a woman to be over a man. For God made Adam and Eve. He made Adam first, Eve second. Eve was the one deceived, not Adam. Adam was deceived when he allowed Eve to deceive him. Deceive him. Brothers and sisters, y'all need to wake up. 
I mean, you know, there is too many people who are allowing this stuff to happen. You know, there's a reason why the Lord hasn't come yet, okay? There's a reason why the rapture hasn't occurred. There's, a, there's souls out there, God still, and God does, God's long-suffering. He doesn't want any man to go to a devil's hell. But there are many going there daily. If you take your last breath and die, like I said yesterday, the casket is too late. If you draw your last breath and you're there and people's viewing you in that casket, there's not one person that can say, Lord, please take him to heaven. Because the Bible very plainly says you are to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. When you're laying there and people's looking at you, well, just know... Uh, if you didn't know God when you died, and you ain't going to know it when you're laying there because you don't know nothing. Your soul's gone. It's already in Hades waiting for judgment. No, you're not in hell. No one's in hell because the Lord has not opened up. He's got to send the angel down with the key to the abyss to open it up. Not even the devil's in hell. The devil's roaming around. People say, oh, devil, go back to hell. You know what? Devil can't go back where he ain't been to yet. He hasn't been in hell yet. Judgment hasn't been given. Judgment has not fallen. Judgment doesn't fall until the end of the thousand-year millennial reign of Jesus Christ when the white throne judgment comes, and that's when God judges everyone. And you may think, well, that's going to take forever. Time does not exist with God. When you get in heaven, there's no day and night. There's just, there's just light. The, the sun is the sun. The S-O-N is the S-O-N. The S-O-N is, is the light. Don't need a sun when there's the light. And when he's there's not gonna be no darkness because there's no darkness in him. I told you guys about <clears throat> a couple weeks ago. About a week or so ago. It was about a week ago. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. About a week ago, I think. If it wasn't a week ago, it'd be a week ago. Sometime next year. Uh, <laughs> it'll be a week ago. I want to say it was about two weeks. Yeah, about two weeks ago. Yeah, it was two weeks ago. Um wait a minute, no, it wasn't. It was a week. It was last week, I think it was. I had a dream about darkness. Well, I finally figured out what it meant. Or what I've kind of come to it meaning. The day is far spent and the night has come. We need to be out doing the, will, the work of God, the will of God, getting the love out while the light is still there so we stumble not and fall. We need to get out there and do as much loving, compassion ministry as we can so that God can... Um, Oh, Lord, help me. I need help. <sighs> mm. We need to get out and do everything we can to the glory of God because we can't be playing games no more, brothers and sisters. We can't. Jesus is coming. We don't know when. And that's that's the, that's the reason why you don't want to be sitting around playing around. You want to get... You want to get the word out while there's still time because if you don't, it's like, you're, 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 ask God to give you the want to do so. The way I do it is here on YouTube. The way I do it is also on Facebook. You know, get out, show God, you know. Stop living in the flesh. The flesh is what's sending you to hell. It's only through Christ Jesus are you saved. It's nothing you can do in your mortal body and your flesh that can save you. Your flesh is corrupted. It's sinful. The desires of the world is fleshly desires. They're lust of the flesh, like having sex anytime you want with anyone you want. Drinking, crousing, getting drunk, acting up, fighting, fussing, cussing, arguing, wanting to be a nuisance to everyone around you, hurting people's feelings by talking down to them. That's all of the devil. He comes to lie, kill, and destroy. One of the biggest destroyings he does is lie to people, telling them that homosexuality is okay, drinking's okay, alcohol and drugs. You know what? Those are some of the things. Like and Alcohol is one of the leading killers of relationships and marriages in the world today. It's one of the leading killers of people today. Not only the people that drank, the people who are on the road driving, going home from work or from a long trip or something, and someone drinking decides to, Whoa, I'm going to go home now. And they hit someone head on and kill them. Oh, they sometimes live through it, but the other person's dead. What if that other person was a good person, but they never know Jesus and they, they didn't have time, but they could have? That's why it's important to come to God now. Don't put it off for Saturday, Sunday. Do it today. Right now, you got the time. If you don't know Christ, kneel or bow your head and ask the Lord to forgive you for your sins. Ask the Lord to give you, cleanse you of all unrighteousness and to give you the ability to know when it's not right. Brothers and sisters, you're not promised tomorrow. 
Stop letting the flesh have its pleasures. Rebuke the flesh and live to the soul. You're giving pleasure to dirt. You're allowing dirt of the earth to destroy your forever eternity with Christ. Because you're allowed that what feels good, getting drunk, which is killing you. Um, overeating, that kills you. Um, you know, ask God to take the things that are not of Him away from you. I, I love the fact that God has taken the want for food all the time away from me. I don't feel that I need to eat all the time like I did. You know, I mean, I, I don't feel it anymore. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Brothers and sisters, please open your eyes. You know, stop letting the enemy block your, your blessings. Stop letting the enemy take... Just stop. Stop him before it's too late. Stop letting the flesh be your guide and let Jesus, word, the Word of God, which is Jesus Christ, guide you and direct you. If you truly come before God and ask Him to forgive you of your sins, He will forgive you. He's going to change your wants, your needs, and your desires. There's not going to be any want for, for anything. God puts on your heart to help somebody like a neighbor or a friend or a food bank and you got that extra money. You know what? Go and help them. Because you can't outgive God. You can't outgive God. You can. I'm actually get, going to get blessed and get to do something I've been wanting to do for a while. I'm going to get to pay. I'm going to get to pay back my a, a debt that I ran up a couple about three or four months ago. I'm going to get to pay those two people back today. Thank you, Jesus. I was able to pay. I got my cable bill already paid. I was able to order something through Walmart.com. They don't care at the store. It's for my teeth. And... I was, and I'm able to get groceries I need, pay my other bill, pay my electric bill, and still have money to do groceries and pay someone else back. So I'm thanking God to be able to get this took off my off of me because I, I was just so sick of it, you know. Um, <clears throat> I, I, I just want to say, take the time to get to know God. Take the time to let the Lord guide and direct you. Don't let man destroy you. A lot of people out there are walking in the flesh, allowing the flesh to guide and direct them. If it feels good, do it. No, 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 no. Because what feels good to the flesh is killing, killing you. It's killing you. People are so scared. They are scared. They don't know. They don't know what to do. They feel like they're, you know, um, I don't know. I, 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 what I want to say is just let the Lord, the Lord's will be done in your life. Stop letting the flesh be your God. Let the Lord's word be your God. You know, if, if you give it to God, it's going to be much better. You know, like, like I was saying, you know, I had a, a dear friend. I haven't talked to her in, I don't know, four years or more. Loved her dearly. She's like a sister to me. When I came to the Lord in 08 and totally gave my life to Him, and that's when I feel I truly was born again, was in 08. I gave my heart to God, but I didn't really receive the Lord when I was younger because I didn't understand. But in 08, I gave the Lord my heart, and I have been seeking Him every day since. Not as much back then as I do now. Now I, I just want God to give me guidance and direction because I know it's His direction it will see me through this life. And um, I was... Um, was talking to her in 08. Now, I haven't talked to her since 2011 when her brother died. She was like a sister to me and she even said I was more like family than her family but you wouldn't know that when she doesn't hasn't talked to me in like four years. So I must not have been that much of family to her. I still love her, still pray for her. You guys keep her in your prayers. Her name is Christina McAllister. She goes by Chrissy. She's living in homosexuality and uh, she has a partner that has cult, stage 4 colon cancer and uh, it, you know, I, just to get to where I want to say, I'm not going to go through all that. We were, I had, she, her, her, her friend had called me, asked me was I mad at her, and I said no. This is an 08. I haven't talked to her partner, her friend for, I haven't talked to her in over six years. Um, but anyway, she said, mm -hmm. Chrissy thinks you're mad at her, and I was like, no, I'm not mad at her. Why would I be mad at her? I have no reason to be. I mean, I didn't like the way she was living, but, you know, it's not, it, she, it's a decision. She, I can't stop her. 
But I didn't tell her that. But I did tell her later that she needed to straighten her life up, the, you know, her partner and everything. I, mean, I even gave her a Bible and wrote her a note telling her how I felt, and you know. But anyway, she... Um, God changed me. When he took me out of that life, he changed me into a point where I just... All I want to see is people get their lives right with him. <coughs> but anyway, so she she ends up calling me and she's like, are you mad at me? I was like, no, why? She's like, I've been trying to call you all day. I was like, uh, I haven't had any phone reception. I said I had to put my phone back on the charger because it kept losing frequency. It kept, it kept losing signal. That's right. I should have known my phone. Well, we shared, we shared the same tire because the company I was with and the company she was with shared tires. Um, mine was a prepaid version and hers was a regular version or whatever, you know. Well, anyway, she um, mm -hmm. and she realized what I was saying. She's like, well, you're right. I, I should know it was what happened because mine's been going in now. I was like, yeah. And I asked her had she eaten. She said no. And she came to my house and I had made oven baked steak and pasta salad and rolls and stuff like that and green beans. And she sat down with me and we were eating. And I was talking to her and I told her, I said, uh, I said, you know, I said, I, I started talking about the Lord. I said, you know, and one thing I remember I talked to her, I said, you know, we've been friends too long on this earth not to be friends in heaven. She said, I know that. I said, and we are seeing the end times. And this was eight years ago almost. It'll be eight years ago in October. Which I pray we're not here by then, but if we are, I pray that she turns her life over to God. I really do, because hell is waiting for those who deny Christ. And if you're living in homosexuality, or if you're living in, 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 in any kind of fornication, homosexuality, I don't care if you're married in the world's eyes to the same sex, you're not married in God's eyes. It's not a marriage in God's eyes. He made them male and female for this reason. The man will leave the father and the mother and become one bone, one flesh with his wife. And what God puts together, let no man tear apart. And there is many men who have left their wives to be with men because, oh, that's who I am. No, it's not. No, it's not. You allow the devil to blind you. You need to rebuke that no good for nothing piece of garbage and send him back to Hades where he belongs. Brothers and sisters, it's time to wake up. It's time to realize that if you're living in the flesh, you're living for hell. But if you're living to what the the best that you can, I mean, you're not going to keep the word of God completely. That's why Jesus came. You can't keep what you don't know, and you not you don't know all that Bible. People can people can sit and they can quote scripture to you like crazy, but you know what? Just because someone can quote you scripture, don't mean they really live that scripture. There's a difference in reading it and living it. How do we live it? We ask God to give us convictions of our sins. Brothers and sisters, I'm just going to ask you to please continue to pray for all of our loved ones. All, all of our all of our brothers and sisters in Christ are going through spiritual warfare. I am, everyone is, and I want to ask you to pray for our Ch Tiny Chat Church, for this for this YouTube channel, for my Facebook pages, everything. I'm just asking you to please pray that God's will be done in all matters. Brothers and sisters, we are getting ready to see the trumpet sound. I don't know when, but while we're here, let's not live and let's you know let's not live each day. You know, bringing people down with a humdrum. Well, Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Uh, you know, uh, uh, he could be here tonight. He could be here tomorrow. Uh, Jesus is coming this day. That, that you know what? Let's live with in our hearts that Jesus could come at any moment. Don't be living on a date. Live on any moment. That's what the Lord says. He can come at any time. It's not. It, it's not our place to be saying that you know the Lord is coming on a certain date. No, no man knows the date or the hour. That means any, no Christian knows either. If a man gives you the date, he is a false prophet. Don't listen to them. Don't listen to every "Thus saith the Lord" or "The Lord said to me" or "The Lord revealed to me." That does not necessarily mean that it is true. You know that's why I say I feel God gave me this dream, and I feel that it's this way or that way. You know, like with a darkness dream I had, I just feel like God was saying the dark is at hand. Darkness is at hand. The day is far spent. The night is the darkness is coming. Get out while you can, while there is light to do what you need to do, so that you don't stumble and fall. That means you know there's a there's not there's gonna be a lot of people that don't want to hear the truth. They don't. There's people that thinking well you know like. Uh, a sister in Christ told me the other night, and I'm not saying, you know, I don't, I, I don't believe that we are. I believe we are going to go through some stuff, and we are. We're going through it now. Um, it's that stupid thing. It's um, oh, I tell you, I'm trying to empty something here. Recycling bin is what I wanted to empty. Okay, well, anyway, if it empties, so anyway, I because I'm giving this computer back today. Um, <laughs> I'm getting another new one. This one I didn't feel like was worth the money. Now I'm not so sure I should just keep this one, but then I'm feeling get the new one. It's a more up updated version. It's a touch screen, which I don't really care about touch screens. I got one over there. It don't even work because it quit working. But touch screen is kind of good when you got games you can play with a touch screen. You know, it's easier. But I'm going to keep that one out. And no one's touching it. It's staying out of 
No one's touching it. I don't want messed up. But anyway, I'm beautiful. Um, preference from L'Oreal. I say it to people. I say I'm beautiful. Preference from L'Oreal. Uh, but I actually use VO5. It's a dollar a bottle. It makes me look like I feel it's been a fortune on my hair. Not really. Um, I want to get a haircut. I hate my hair being long. It's not that long as most people would say long, but my hair is going down. I mean, look at this, okay? This to me is too long. It's time to get a haircut. You know, it's too long for me. But I have to wait until I can get out and do it. I don't want no one taking me. I want to go on my own and get it done. Which I, I don't know. Lord willing, it'll be soon. I'm just waiting for God to, God's will to be done, you know? I talk about a lot of different things, but, you know, we're brothers and sisters in Christ. We should open up and talk about certain things in our lives. Like right now, I feel like, you know, it could be any moment that we can go home, but we don't need to sit around, you know, humdrum, to, you know, taking the time and, 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 and you know, like I, I, I sit and ask God to come and everything, but I also know that's being selfish. We need to get out and do the will of God so that we can bring those few souls that don't know Christ into the fold before it's too late. It, you know, I'm not trying to be rude or nothing when I say that. I'm being truthful. I feel that we need to, like, go out and talk to people about the love of God so they can be ready. It may be the very day we go up and go to someone's house and they get saved that, poof, the trumpet blows, we go home. We can't sit and humdrum and look for these. Uh, there's a lot of fear monglers out there, okay? And I, I don't want to be a fear mongler. I believe Jesus is coming, and, and if it fears you that you're going to go to hell if you don't get right, well, then you know what? That's a fear you need, because that's a true fear. There are some people on Facebook that people don't really, one named Josh somebody, people's not really so happy with him anymore. It used to be he was real good, but he's more like, he's fear mongling. some people say. I don't listen to him. I used to listen to him, and I quit. I said, I'm not listening to him anymore, because I'm not listening to someone who's bringing people, you know, fear mongling and this is going to happen. You know what? Stop it. Read the Word of God and look what you're doing. If you go against the Word of God, you're not of God. That's it. Believe it or not, that's the way it is. If you're going against the very written Word of God, you're not of God. If God doesn't go against His Word, how do you think He's going to let you go against it? Mm -mm. Now, I don't know that Josh does that or not, but I'm just saying people who do. Given dates, you false, false prophets. You're, pro, pro, you're false prophesying. No man knows. And if someone gives you a date, walk away. Better yet, don't walk, fly, run, do anything you can. Get away from that false prophet. Because I'm telling you right now, no man knows. God's word is God's word. God will not change his word. God will not reveal to no man the date or the hour of his return. If God says no man knows, then no man will know. What, what makes you think you're better than anybody else in this world to know the date of his return? When not even the son, when he walked this world, know the time of his, the father's return or the time of his return to come back. And he was God. Do I think Jesus knows now? Yeah, Jesus is in heaven. He is God. But when he was walking this earth, he did not know. Come on. Come on. If it goes against the word, it goes against God. Until the next time, eyes wide open. And continue to look up, for your redemption draweth nigh. Take the time to read the word. So that you can spot the word versus the world. And man-made doctrine, man-made lying. After all, man didn't make us, God did. God knows what's best. We love you here at Last Chance Ministries, and we thank you for your, I thank you for all of your kind remarks and your comments and stuff. Thank you so much. For those of you who come against the channel, like the one person who did, I blocked you yesterday. Uh, you uh, were saying that uh, the whole thing about God was not real and all that. Well, you know what? I'm going to tell you right now. You said, I won't debate with you. That's dangerous. You know what? That's right. It is dangerous to debate a child of God because I'm not going to sit and argue with nobody over nothing. I'm going to let God take care of it. And God knows you from your inside out, and He can and will take care of you because God says, do not touch the anointed. The anointed are the ones who love the Lord, the ones who, and I don't feel myself even worthy to call myself anointed. But you know what? I am a child of God, which means I am anointed by God. And for you to come against me, this channel, or any of my brothers and sisters, you're coming against God himself. Because when we gave our heart to God, we became children of God. And children of God are God's blessed. God's, um, it causes 
we are a, a royal priesthood. And brothers and sisters, remember this: you all have a ministry inside of you. All have a, you all have a ministry to do, whether it's helping people, being a mom as a ministry, being a dad, being being a, a brother, a, a, a sister, a mom, you know, whatever. It's all a ministry. God has given you a gift to do so. I didn't get the gift of being a dad. I mean, kind of in a way I did with my with my brother in here, and also I raised my brother my brother's little girl. His son, not so much. I mean, I loved him and tried to take care of him. He was like the black sheep of the family, kind of like I was in a different way, though, with him. No one believed he really belonged to my brother, but I do believe he belonged to my brother. Um, he's like a mini-me to me. He looks a lot like me. No, no, he wasn't mine. I never, I never went in that area at all. I never dipped my pen in that well. Um, figure of speech, I didn't. I mean, I, I, loved, I loved their mom and everything. She's a wonderful lady, but no. No. My brother did do something to one of my girlfriends that I was engaged to, but no. I never touched, no. I never touched his. Never. I, I, that's disgusting. That is so disgusting. Now, see, my girlfriend, we were never together that way. So, never would, never would, never will, you know. That's a tainted well when someone allows himself. And, you know, if you're dating somebody and they sleep with somebody, you're supposed to be getting married to them. You need to consider one thing, which marriage, there really is no time for marriage anymore because Jesus is coming. But think about it. If they're sleeping with someone now, do you not think they're going to do it when you marry them? You're getting a foreshadow of what you're getting into. Think about that. Uh, I don't know if there's someone out there that needed that. For some reason, it came out, so I let it come out. You know, you need to think about what you're doing before you. Before you step into the frying pan, you better look at the oil. If it looks nasty, chances are the frying pan's gonna be more nastier. You get into a marriage with somebody and you're and, and they don't love you. They don't love you. They love the idea of being married and they can't find no and then when they get married, it's like when someone when someone's attached, they become everybody's eye candy, you know, over when they weren't married. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I don't look for nobody anymore. I mean, I joined an online dating service to try to find a, a you know a woman that could be a you know a, a, a friend and a soulmate. And would I like to have gotten married? In a, yeah, in a way, I would have liked to have gotten married, not to have children. No, no, no. I don't want any children. Not that I don't love kids. I just don't think this world's worth bringing them up in. I think this world is too scary for children anymore. I think it, it's just not a place to go bring children into. Those children are being born into it now. Lord help them. But they'll all go in the rapture too, all the children being born. Even the ones in the mother's womb will be tucking, you know. But I just want to ask you all, please take the time today to let God guide and direct you. And, and, and I love you all, and I'll see you soon with Jesus. Sorry for the long video, but hey, when God moves, I have to obey. And I let him do what is his business. This is his channel, not mine. Till next time, keep looking up. Jesus is coming. We love you, but Jesus loves you more. See you soon with Jesus. Bye.